Welcome to Football Game Plans FCS Kickoff presented by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is a producer behind the boards as we bring you our 2018 Southern Conference season preview. Let's get things kicked off by checking out some of the top storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. Randy Sanders takes over as head coach at East Tennessee State. Former head coach Carl Torbush retired this offseason after helping restart the program. Sanders is coming over from Florida State where he served as the offensive coordinator under Jimbo Fisher. He's been the OC at both Tennessee and Kentucky prior to FSU, and I believe this is an excellent hire as Sanders definitely knows offense number one, having played quarterback at Tennessee in the mid-80s, and two, he's a Tennessee guy through and through being born in Morristown, Tennessee, which is not too far from East Tennessee State, so he should be able to build on the solid foundation laid by Torbush. Wofford will be ushering in a new head coach for the first time in 30 years as the legendary Mike Ayers retired, making way for former Pitt Panther defensive coordinator Josh Conklin to take over. He's no stranger to the SoCon, having been a DC at the Citadel and being a part of this Wofford staff before. It's also a family affair for him as well as his brother-in-law Al Clark III and father-in-law Al Clark Jr. all play for Wofford. Conklin has had defensive success at every stop he's been and more recently at Pitt his defenses were always amongst the best in the ACC so this looks like another slam dunk hire for the Southern Conference. And since we're talking about coaches, let's check in on some second-year coaches in the SoCon. Last season, we saw Clay Hendricks lead the Furman Paladins to an impressive 8-5 season, including an impressive victory in the playoffs against Elon. Not much was expected from the Paladins early in the season. Uh, even so, even more so, I'm sorry, if you consider the fact that they started out 0-3. So needless to say, Hendricks did a fantastic job with his squad. I also believe that Chattanooga's head coach Tom Arthur did a fantastic job as well. Many don't understand that not all victories show up in the win-loss column. Art dealt with a ton of injuries in his first season, especially at the quarterback position. And all of those injury obstacles aside, the Mox finished with a respectable 3-5 and five record in the SoCon. And that sets the table for them to have a bounce-back season in 2018. Last year, we saw three SOCON teams make it to the playoffs. Nearly would have been four as Western Carolina was in the mix until the very end of the season. The three teams, Wofford, Furman, and Sanford, were strong squads and definitely made their presence felt in the postseason. Both Furman and Wofford actually won games, with the Terriers actually being a team to knock out the Paladins in the second round. With the Citadel and Chattanooga expected to bounce back and Mercer and East Tennessee State looking really strong and underrated, I think this year we could see that fourth member of this conference make it to the playoffs. As we get ready to kick off the start of summer workouts and fall camp, we will give you a look around the conference at some of the conference's best, and we'll start by unveiling our all-conference team, beginning with the offensive side of the ball. As we take a look at our offensive preseason all-SOCON squad, quarterback Devlin Hodges was a no-brainer after the year he put up last season, tossing for nearly 4,000 yards and 31 touchdowns, 12 of those 31 touchdowns, and 11 56 of those nearly 4,000 yards went to his wide receiver, Calvin McKnight, who's also on this list. Now, McKnight has that special blend of pure receiving ability and the run after the catch skills that can take a short pass a long way and turn a medium gain into a big one. Both guys should have fantastic senior seasons. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, and what a secondary we put together here with the Citadel's Aaron Spann III, Western Carolina's Marvin Tillman, Furman's Akil Anor, and Chattanooga's Kareem Orr. They are all amongst the best in the nation at their respective positions, but we all know that it starts up front, and the SoCon could potentially have the 2018 Buck Buchanan Award winner and senior Amar Gooden out of Sanford. Gooden has the quickness and bursts off the edge to be very disruptive against, the bo against both the run and against the pass. Last season, a 6'240 pounder, right up 15 and a half TFLs, five and a half sacks, 101 tackles, and routes being named the SOCON Defensive Player of the Year. And wrapping up our preseason all SOCON team with the specialist, and this is Western Carolina's Ian Berryman's second time making our list. He was also a football game plan All-American last year, which our All-American list will be out pretty soon as we wrap up these conference previews. The senior punter averaged 44.4 yards a punt last year, forcing 14 fair catches and downing 26 inside the 20-yard line. 
And we'll kick off our team by team look at the SOCOM by starting with the Furman Paladins. Now the Paladins have everything that you need to be successful in football, strong running game, strong defense. Those two can give you a ton of optimism heading into the season. One of the major causes for concern is breaking in a new quarterback. But as the old saying goes, the best way to help out a quarterback is with a strong running game and solid offensive line. The Paladins have both. I think they could hit the ground running this season as they have two huge early out of conference tests against Elon and Colgate that could tell the tale. The more things change, the more they stay the same in regards to the Wofford Terriers, the football program. I actually think you'll see them pick up right where they left off last season. I'm mostly interested to see how improved they'll be on the back end defensively. That's where they had some questions last year. Now on the offensive side, we know option football gives you a chance each and every week to be successful. And the Terriers have an all-conference performer in the backfield and beat back Andre Stoddard. This is still a top 15 ball club, in my opinion, in the FCS. The Sanford Bulldogs could potentially have the Walter Payton Award winner and the Buck Buchanan Award winner on the same team. And I'm talking about Devlin Hodges and Amar Gooden. Both are premier players at their position. And along with wide receiver Calvin McKnight, make this team particularly dangerous on the national scale. I have some concerns about the rest of the defense as they're replacing some studs at linebacker and also in the secondary. So I'll have to take a wait and see approach before, they, before fully jumping on the Sanford Bulldog hype train. But don't get it twisted. This team will be in the mix for the SoCon title. Keeping on the Mercer Bears, quietly they have a very experienced team returning and they own a very good defensive squad as well. On the offensive side, sophomore quarterback Kalen Riley should improve on a solid freshman campaign and wide receiver Marquise Irvin should crack that 1,000 yard mark this season. The last few years, head coach Bobby Lamb has had this team on the brink of breaking through and he's a fantastic coach. I think with the experience and depth that they have on the roster entering this season, this could be the year that it actually happens. The Chattanooga Mocs will be much improved in 2018. They're entering the season healthy and are looking good on both sides of the line of scrimmage, which is key in the SOCON. Last year, they go from having issues at quarterback to now it being a position of strength. I think this team has a ton of athleticism on both sides of the ball, and I think many will be surprised at how good the Mocs are at running the football this year. They'll have to be as they'll get that'll give them a chance to close out games this season and avoid shootout Saturday each and every week. The second week of the season, September the 8th they have a big litmus test against the citadel bulldogs and speaking of the citadel they enter 2018 with an experienced group and a backfield that can run with anyone in the fcs we know the bulldogs will be one of the best rushing teams in the nation but they may also be one of the more explosive too because of the personnel that they have in the backfield now defensively is where you can have some slight concerns especially along the defensive line if those questions get answered early the bulldogs could be in the mix for a playoff berth Western Carolina has a star quarterback themselves in Tyree Adams, who threw for 22 touchdowns to only eight interceptions as a sophomore. So we may see those touchdown numbers increase as they'll be breaking in a new running back. Plus, defensively, they lost a lot and will be inexperienced on that side of the ball. This was a team that was a few plays away from making the playoffs last season. If their defense can improve to, or their defense can prove to be an asset and not a liability this year. They have more than enough offense to get the job done. Now, going back to Tyree Adams for a minute, I think many nationally are truly sleeping on how special of a skill set that he has. The cupboard isn't bare at East Tennessee Stadium when you combine the talent that's there already along with new head coach Randy Sanders' wizardry. Things could get very exciting pretty quickly in Johnson City, Tennessee. I think this year we'll see the Bucks make significant strides within the SoCon and be much more competitive within the conference. If this young team learns how to close out games, look out. Things are looking up for the key debts this year at VMI. Head coach Scott Wackenheim has brought in some new assistant coaches, and that should inject some life into this VMI program this upcoming season. This team definitely has talent on it. They just have to realize it. If they can get things together offensively, they'll win some games. Their offense really let them down last season. I do feel like defensively they're competitive, and that'll keep them in games, and they're more than capable of winning those games. So we'll see what the improvements are that'll help them break through this upcoming season. So that's a wrap from Football Game Plan's FCS kickoff. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the FCS Opening Drive podcast on iTunes and also on SoundCloud where Dave Hashagan and myself dive deeper into the world of the FCS. And don't forget to subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network on YouTube where you can find all of our FCS video content at youtube.com slash football game plan.